Hello, and welcome to Did You Know Gaming Extra. Today's topic is applications of video games in the medical field. For decades, there's been a lot of talk about the supposed negative side effects of playing video games. In contrast, there's little coverage of how gaming can actually have a positive impact on players, and not just on their hand-eye coordination. Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, or CBT, is one approach to combat anxiety and depression. Isabel Granich, a professor and chair of the Developmental Psychopathology Department in the Behavioral Science Institute, believes that video games could be a powerful resource in treating some aspects of mental health in young people. She wrote, CBT focuses on changing thinking patterns and behavioral strategies that cause and maintain anxious and depressive feelings. There are often workbooks and homework to work through, but adolescents often find didactic lessons boring. In contrast, 97% of youth play video games regularly. We're using games to hijack this enthusiasm, to train emotional resilience skills that will prevent anxiety and depression. The aim is to work with game designers and programmers, as well as young players, to study how games train emotional resilience and design games specifically for this purpose. Unlike therapy sessions, which typically last only an hour or two, video games can hold a player's attention for hours on end. With this in mind, games often trigger both positive and negative emotional responses. When it comes to the negative emotions, this challenges the player to create strategies that help them work through each emotion. Unlike dealing with a standardized set of role-playing scenarios that may apply to general groups of people, a video game can respond directly to an individual player's needs and adjust the levels of difficulty and applied reinforcement. 80% of youths who need mental health care never receive it or never seek out help. This could be due to the stigma associated with these problems, the cost of treatment, or a lack of access to it. When playing video games, the player needn't worry about facing potential judgment from somebody they don't know, which might encourage more people to seek out treatment. The cost of games is also considerably cheaper than regular one-on-one -on -one therapy sessions. Professor Granich makes it clear that this is not planned to be a replacement for current methods, but instead just another option. Research is also being done into how video games can help deal with pain. A study published by Brennan Spiegel, director of health research at Cedar sinai Medical Institute in March 2017, looked at 3D immersive video versus the impact of 2D video to distract from pain. This study was done on a range of patients who were experiencing varying levels of discomfort such as physical trauma, stroke rehabilitation, brain injury, and cancer pain. The patients who watched the 3D application took part in a 15-minute virtual reality experience called Pain Relieve VR, a part of Applied VR designed specifically to treat pain in patients who are bedbound or have limited mobility. The immersive 360-degree game had patients shooting balls at a range of moving targets by moving their head towards them. On the other hand, those who watched the 2D applications witnessed relaxing nature scenes with an audio track featuring Native American shaman music. The study found that a 15-minute VR session resulted in hospitalized patients having significant improvements in pain reduction when compared to watching a 2D video. The results indicated that VR hijacks the patient's auditory, visual, and proprioceptive senses, creating an immersive distraction that restricts the mental processing of pain. Achille Interactive have put this into practice with their project Evo, a game that has the potential to help children with ADHD and sensory processing disorder and potentially detect Alzheimer's. Starting life as a trial game called Neuro Racer in 2011, the app was designed to test adults aged between 60 to 85 on their short-term memory loss and long-term focus. It was a driving game which required the player to navigate a course whilst responding to green targets on screen and ignoring red targets. The game responds to the player's skill level by increasing the difficulty as they master the gameplay. All this information is collected in the app to understand if the player is improving their cognitive process. The game was given to 46 participants over four weeks. The results found that after not playing the game for six months, the skills of the player hadn't altered. Lead researcher of the study, Adam Ghazali, stated, What's most novel here is that other abilities that were not directly trained, such as sustained attention and working memory, also improved. Ghazali started Achille Interactive Labs shortly after this and modified the game to make Project Evo. Though very similar to Neuro Racer and its mechanics, the game was changed to have an alien navigate the path and obstacles were added. In 2015, 348 children with ADHD were tested with Project Evo or with a non-therapeutic game. The results found that those playing Project Evo improved significantly over those that didn't. In 2017, the test was done on 57 children who had ADHD and half who had SPD. The results found that all the children improved by playing Evo, but specifically, the children with SPD improved dramatically and even functioned better outside of playing the game. The game has been put forward for FDA approval, and if it gets approved, it will be the first prescribable video game for ADHD. Though not designed as a replacement for pharmaceuticals, it would be an alternative for patients not comfortable with the possible side effects of drugs for ADHD. 
Researchers have also found that Project Evo algorithms can help correctly detect those with amyloid deposits on their brain, which are considered the biomarkers of Alzheimer's disease. And now for this episode's random piece of trivia. Today we're talking about 2018's God of War for the PlayStation 4. Director Corey Barlog previously worked at LucasArts and was allowed to read the script for the cancelled Star Wars live-action TV series. He was blown away by how much the story made him care about the series' ongoing villain, Palpatine, and he used this as an inspiration for Kratos' character in the story for God of War. Do it. Oh, and by the way, what's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, Boogie2988, coming at you live through the power of Did You Know Gaming Extra. You may not know this, but I've been using video games my whole life to help me stave off my depression and my anxiety. I carry a 3DS or Nintendo Switch with me everywhere I go, or at least play mobile games on my phone when I get anxious when I'm out in public. It's really helpful. Though I'll warn you, it's a really terrible diet plan. That's how I got fat. If you enjoyed this episode, check out my YouTube channel where I talk about depression, anxiety, my life, and video games all the time. Time. It's a perfect fit if you enjoyed this video. And guys, thanks for watching. I love you very much, and I'll speak with you again soon. Thanks to Boogie for joining us for this episode of the show. Hey, you there. I got a secret for you. Yeah, you, you. You're sitting at the computer. You might also like to know that we're making a book based on our other show on this channel, Region Locked. If you're interested in regional exclusive games, check out the link to the fundraiser in the description down below. That's all for today, but take a look at these cool people. They help fund our show through Patreon, and we think that's pretty cool, and we think they're pretty cool. So if you'd like to join the ranks of these stunning individuals, be sure to take a look at how you can help us out in the description down below. As always, if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to slippity slap that thumbs up, slide on over to the subscribe button while you're at it, unless you already are, in which case you could consider getting better updated with our YouTube content by ding in the bell. That's alright. Hey, that was the same one as last time. Did anybody notice? I don't know.